if you've ever looked at the spec sheet of a graphics card, you've probably seen this specification called floating point performance, which is measured in flops. And in this video, we're going to take a look at what that actually means. FLOPS stands for floating point operations per second. So clearly, because it's per second, we're talking about how fast something can be done. But in order to really understand what this is all about, we need to know what a floating point operation is first. Um, and what is floating point anyway? Floating point is something that allows you to express a number of any size in the same amount of space or the same amount of digits. And I'm going to explain that using this piece of paper, okay? So I've got a piece of paper right here. It's got some numbers on it. So 3.14, 600 million, 548, and 0.000, wait, 0.000157. It's kind of hard reading through the back of the paper. This paper contains all sorts of numbers and some of these numbers take up lots of space like this one and some of them take up less space like like this one now let's say i am really worried about trees getting cut down to make paper i want to save the trees so i want to minimize the amount of space that these numbers take up on my piece of paper i don't want to write all these these zeros here and here that's kind of a waste, isn't it? So what I can do in order to fix this is use floating point. And one floating point system that you might be very familiar with is called scientific notation. So what I'm going to do is the following. So what I've just done is well, you can see what I've just done. I have written all these numbers using scientific notation. And now all of them take up exactly the same amount of digits on my piece of paper. So they're all three digits. So the significant numbers are three digits and then one digit for the exponent. So now what I've done is I've I've made these large numbers, this this actual large number and this very small number that is just large on my piece of paper, I've made them a lot more compact and they're now all the same size. Now, of course, on a piece of paper like this, it doesn't really matter considering that I have a whole pile of paper right here. So I have plenty of paper. So why would I need to do this? It's not really necessary. But in a computer, it's incredibly important because in a computer, first of all, we just want to minimize the amount of data that we use because that way we need less storage capacity. And then also we want all of the numbers to take up exactly the same amount of space. We don't want all these, these different size numbers. So therefore we use the floating point system that I just demonstrated uh, that most people know is scientific notation in a computer as well. Only then, of course, we do it in binary. So the um, let's see here, these digits, the significant digits, those are in binary. And this is also in binary, the exponent. The 10 becomes a 2, right? Because in binary, we don't have 10 digits. We have two digits. So in binary, the base, that is this number, becomes a 2. So the way this is done in a computer is let's say we have a 32 bit floating point number is we have 32 bits available. The first bit is used to indicate whether the number is positive or negative. We call that the sign bit. Then the next eight bits are the exponent. So that is this little number right there. And finally, the remaining 23 bits are used for the significant digits in binary. You might be wondering, where's the base? the two in binary, right? It's not a 10 in binary, it's a two. Well, we don't need to store the base because it's always two. It's always exactly the same. Um, so there is no need to, to, to store a two every time for every number. Uh, and now the computer can simply perform operations on these numbers. Hey, wait, did you notice I just said operations? So the computer can start performing operations with these floating point numbers. And that is exactly what this is about. Remember, floating point operations. So what we can do is we can simply count how many floating point operations a certain piece of hardware or maybe an entire computer is able to perform in one second. 
and that gives us the flops rating that you see on a spec sheet. That rating, for example, if it says uh, two teraflops, I don't know, that means two trillion floating point operations, that is, two trillion operations on numbers like these in one second. That's what it means. Then there is also the question of precision. Like right? You see these um, things like half precision or double precision or single precision or even triple or quadruple precision sometimes. That refers to how many bits are used for the entire floating point number. So a, a standard floating point number right, um, has 32 bits. So regular single precision, as we call that, floating point numbers are 32 bits and use 23 bits for the significant digits. But we can also have um, half precision floating point numbers, which are only 16 bits in size. Uh, if we don't need much precision and we just want a very fast um, and we just want to process things very quickly. Or, if we do need lots of precision, we can use 64-bit uh, floating point numbers, or even 128-bit floating point numbers. So if you're going to compare uh, one piece of hardware to another piece of hardware, don't compare the half-precision performance of one thing to the uh, single precision or double precision performance of the other card. Make sure you're comparing the right values because of course when processing half precision floating point numbers a piece of hardware will be way faster than when it will be processing single or double precision floating point numbers. Well anyway, now you know a little bit more than the average person about what floating point performance is in the world of graphics cards but also in the world of CPUs or anything that can process information basically. I hope you've enjoyed this video and of course thank you for watching.